In the late winter of 1978, British fugitive Ronnie Biggs recorded two songs for the Sex Pistols. At the time, he was on the run from the law, residing in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Malcolm McLaren, the Sex Pistols manager, original idea was that the Sex Pistols are going to fly down to Brazil after their show in San Francisco and do a poetry reading with Ronnie Biggs. McLaren claimed to have told the entire band back in New Orleans about his scheme to hang out with his idol Ronnie Biggs. He said that he got in contact with a stringer from The Sun who was going to arrange the poetry reading. According to Johnny Rotten, he wasn't informed about the trip to Brazil or meeting Ronnie Biggs until the night of the Winterland show in San Francisco. From the brilliant book The Wicked Ways of Malcolm McLaren by Craig Bomberg, an excerpt from an interview with Ted Cohen, I accidentally broke up the Sex Pistols. John finally gotten kind of bearable during the last day or so, and I was laughing and joking around with him, and I said something like, well, this is great, one more show, and it's off to Brazil. He turned around and said, what are you talking about, Brazil? And one of the boys, Steve or Paul, said, oh yeah, while you and Sid were on the bus, we decided we're going to Brazil and do a poetry reading with Ronnie Biggs. John thought it was a joke at first until he realized that they were serious and snapped. He quit the band right after the San Francisco show. Rotten wanted nothing to do with Ronnie Biggs, whom he felt was a common thug and had little to do with a great train robbery, and was only famous because he escaped from prison and fled to Brazil. To him, he was just a hired bag man who robbed the working man's payroll, along with his goons who severely beat the train's driver, which made him hate the idea even more. And it was the final straw after having to deal with their chaotic tour of America and Malcolm pulling this publicity stunt made his plan to quit the band so much easier. After the show, Malcolm flew back to London to get the legal paperwork ready to make Ronnie Biggs the new lead singer of the Sex Pistols. During his short stay in England, he contacted the band's documentist, Julian Temple, to bring a cameraman with him for the trip to Brazil. The drummer, Paul Cook, and guitarist, Steve Jones, hung out with a great train robber and worked on two songs that were to be released as singles and appear in the great rock and roll swindle film and soundtrack album. The tracks were recorded in a studio located inside a church in the city of Rio de Janeiro. Biggs wrote the lyrics to the first song, No One Is Innocent, and additional lyrics for the second track, Belts and Fuzz Agassa. Temple filmed the trio, wandered around the streets of Rio, and sunbathed in on the beach, while at night they drank tons of alcohol, nursed sunburns, and did copious amounts of drugs. American actor James Jeter was brought in to portray the bassist and Nazi fugitive Martin Bormann, who was thought to have escaped the Battle of Berlin at the time. According to Ronnie Biggs, the recording of the tracks were fueled by alcohol and drugs, which he attributed to everybody sounding a bit off-key. After filming the band, performing on a boat, cruising down the Amazon River, the segment ended with the band dumping their instruments into the river. This proved problematic as the deposit they placed on the gear did not cover the cost. Julian Temple, the 22-year-old Sex Pistols filmmaker, was used as human insurance and had to remain in Brazil until Malcolm raised enough money to pay off the gear. According to him, he lived off of cans of tropical juice while staying in Rio. The two tracks were mixed in London and one was released as a single, No One Is Innocent, with My Way as a double A-side. It peaked at number 7 on the UK single charts, giving the band a top 10. The song was originally known as Costa Driver in reference to the beating the train driver received during the Great Train Robbery, but it was rejected for the UK market due to being in poor taste. But it was named that in France. Due to the legal writing in his singing contract he signed with Malcolm, Biggs did not receive a penny of royalties from either song despite writing the lyrics to both of them. Years later, according to Johnny Rotten, when his band Public Image Limited was touring Brazil in 1987, Biggs somehow managed to track down the hotel Johnny was staying in and sent him a message asking about royalties from No One Is Innocent and the great rock and roll swindle, which he promptly ignored. Ronnie Biggs would continue to record music with musicians who would track him down in Brazil. He tried to make a living as being the UK's most wanted man. Eventually, he returned to Britain in 2001 after spending over 30 years of living in South America and was quickly arrested for being an escaped train robbing fugitive. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Cuppy's Music Curios. My name is Cuppy, and I hope to see you soon. Cheerio!